Hello, dear friends. A very good morning. And may God bless all of you. May the Holy Spirit meet every one of your needs. And your greatest need, your need, the greatest need of every one of us is to have the Holy Spirit inside of us. Without Him, there is no solution for problems. Without Him, it's impossible for you to be happy. It's impossible to be happy without the Spirit of God, without receiving the Holy Spirit, without being baptized with the Holy Spirit, without being sealed with the Holy Spirit. You can have money and success, you can have whatever you want in, in this life. But if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you are going to continue being poor, miserable, and unhappy. There's no other way. Only Him, the Spirit of God, guides us according to His will, which will make us complete. Why? Because He, God, knows what's best for us, and He wants to please as well our hearts. But let me tell you something. We've been speaking about righteousness and unrighteousness. Righteousness and unrighteousness. Who doesn't love righteousness? Who hates unrighteousness? Who hates unrighteousness? Everyone, every human being is already born with that, I think, with that sense, with that desire, that will to always want righteousness, especially when they are going through an injustice. But when we speak of righteousness, when the Bible speaks of righteousness or unrighteousness, it is referring to the root of unrighteousness or the root of unrighteousness, which is sin or sins. Pay attention. Sometimes the person says, Oh, Bishop, I don't do evil to anyone. I am a kind of person that if I can't help, I won't harm either. I am someone who lives for my family. I live a simple life in a way. I'm not perfect, but I don't do evil to anyone. But why do I suffer so much? Why do I suffer so much? And then the devil blows in that person's mind like this. Look, no, you were born to suffer. You were born because in the other life you were an evil person and now you are paying for it. These are all lies, cheap talk, lies. Or you are suffering because that's your destiny. You were born to suffer. Your parents were like this, your grandparents, your marriage didn't work. Your parents' marriage didn't work. The, the marriage of your grandparents didn't work. You were already born to suffer. All these are lies and foolish talk. Those who have the Holy Spirit have the light. They have light in them. Those who have God within them, they don't live by luck, good luck. Oh, my destiny is to suffer. My destination is that and the other. No. With God, what God sees in a person isn't always what the person does in that moment. How many people we've seen, many testimonies of people who are living a life that was full of disorder and irregular, but all of a sudden they had an encounter with God. They were baptized with the Holy Spirit. And then you ask, but how? This person only did what was evil and now they became a saint all of a sudden. And as for me, I'm in the church for so long and I still don't have the Holy Spirit. Why? I will tell you why people suffer 
unrighteousness or injustices, why people live a life of calamity and sadness even though they don't do evil to anyone. It has nothing to do with destiny or it's written in the moon, in the stars. These are nonsense. Pay attention. Here in the Bible, and you know that the Word of God is what enlightens our understanding. The Word of God is spirit and life. Those who pay attention to the Word of God pays attention to the Holy Spirit and to eternal life, not to a life of a few years here on earth. So the Word of God teaches how God chooses His elect ones. Jesus said, many are called, few are chosen. Sometimes the person is in the church, they live in the church, they don't do evil to anyone. If they can help someone, they will do so. However, what does God consider inside of us? What does God evaluate? I think this way. I think according to what is written here. I believe in this. You see, for example, God says here the following. It's God speaking here. I have found David, the son of Jesse. It's not just any David. It's not all Davids, only the son of Jesse. He's defining well who this David is, whom he called and chosen, that he found. Because God looks for. If he's found, is because he was looking for someone, isn't it? If you are not looking for something, you are not going to find it. But if you look for something, it's because you want to find it. So he says, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. A man after my own heart, my soul, who will do all my will. So, pay attention, dear friends. This is what makes the difference. Sometimes you don't do anything wrong, but your life is useless. Why? Because God sees your heart. He sees my heart. He sees the heart of every person because He's looking for them. He's looking for people whose heart are after His will. So, He finds these hearts even before they are born. This is very nice. So, when a person, for example, is sealed with the Holy Spirit, baptized with the Holy Spirit, they have the wealth, the greatness, the power of God inside of them, which is the Holy Spirit. And the one who gives the Holy Spirit is who? Is God, the Lord Jesus. When a person receives the Holy Spirit, it's not because they deserved it. No. It's not by their own merits, because no one deserves by anything from God by merits. But God sees the heart of each of us. He's seen your heart. He's seen my heart. He sees if my heart is inclined towards the altar, which is His will, or if it's inclined towards the offering on the altar, for example. Do you understand, dear friends? In each choice we make in life, the thought, when the thought comes, God knows what we are thinking and He sees the inclination of our heart. If our heart is inclined towards what is righteous, what is correct, what is fair, what is of integrity, then, then person is chosen. 
But if the heart that no one sees, no one sees, only God knows the hearts and nobody else. Now, if the heart is inclined towards themselves, it's a heart inclined towards doing its own will and desires and satisfying its vanities and ambitions, if the heart is inclined towards living intensively the things of this world as long as it's alive, then God sees that. Then He discards that heart because He's looking for people whose heart is aligned to His will, aligned to with, with His will, desiring to do His will. And His will is righteousness. Is righteousness. The will of God, God is righteousness. God hates unrighteousness. God abhors unrighteousness, which is sin. Sin, for example. You, you see, just for you to think, just to help you understand this, God created Adam and Eve as perfect beings. And he said to them, look, Adam, pay attention. All of this is yours, but that tree over there, that tree is mine, is my property. Do not touch it, because the day that you touch it, you will die. And Eve knew that as well. Eve knew that. God said, don't touch it, because if you touch it, you are going to die. And then what happened? They touched it. That's all they did. They disobeyed. If it was nowadays, people would say, oh, come on, it was just a little fruit, come on. Just because of, of a fruit, I'm going to lose my salvation and die. Oh, God is too harsh. No, He's not. The thing is that He is perfection and righteousness. He's truth. So, whatever is the inclination we have, towards unrighteousness, towards what's wrong and sinful, then this already separates the person from God. Of course, that many people, the majority at least, live in sin. But there are people that even though they are in sin, even though they were born in sin, there are people who have a heart inclined towards what is righteous and fair. It's like I said here the other day about the testimony of a young lady who was a prostitute. And there, when she was having intercourse with a man, she was there giving her body, lending her body to him, and he was there enjoying himself with pleasure. But she had tears in her eyes. And in that moment she said, My Lord, this is not the life I want. It's not what I wanted. Take me out of this life. Help me. I, I need to feed my son, my daughter. I, I have to, to leave. I need food. Have mercy on me. In that moment... God heard her prayer. In the moment she was having intercourse and the sexual relationship there, she spoke to God and God heard her voice. She was in sin. However, her heart was inclined towards what was right and righteous. So you who are watching me from within a prison, a hospital, you who are experiencing a bitter moment in your life, God is evaluating your heart. What do you want? If what you want is what is righteous and fair and to live a life where your conscience 
has nothing to accuse you of, then you can be sure that God will visit you. You can be sure of that. And that's why the Bible says that God loves those whose hearts are sincere. And here he says, I have found, the, pay attention, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. Because usually human beings are after the devil's heart. And that's why the vast majority of people are lost in this world. That's why there are wars. There is disgrace. That's why there is all sort of evil and perversity and unrighteousness. Because human beings are inclined towards evil. But those whose heart are inclined to what is righteous and fair and perfect and good according to the heart of God, then these ones he saves. Did you understand, dear friend? So now you know that your life in relation to God does not depend on third parties. It doesn't depend on a religion, a church, the denomination you go to. It does not depend on anyone except yourself. It depends on your heart. Where is your heart going to? So, for example, many colleagues of mine, ex-pastors, left the work, but they were doing so well. My gosh, I remember that guy was so nice, so spiritual. And all of a sudden, he turns his back on the work and goes look after his own life. Why? God knew of his heart. He was there doing the work, doing the work, supposedly doing the will of God, but his heart was inclined towards serving himself. So many end up leaving the work and they live shooting towards every direction, especially shooting towards me. Praise God. Praise God. Blessed are you when they revile you and say all sorts of evil things against you. It's because great your reward in heaven. And look, I'll tell you something just between us. I don't want to pass here a feeling that will cause envy on anyone, but the one whom God chooses, it's because he found, he thought that that person should have been found and chosen, which is the case of David. David did what he did. David committed horrible, grave mistakes, but David was a man after God's own heart. I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, who will do all my will. He found, for example, the Virgin Mary. He found her, that young lady, I think she was around 16 at the time, and he found her so that in her, his son could be formed, the Lord Jesus. He found her. There were many young ladies at the time, good ones, faithful and loyal. But he found Mary. So what? If he found her, who can argue with that? Who can argue with him? So if he found me, what can you do? What can you do? If he chose me, if he chose you, or if he chose Moses, if he chose David, if he found David, if he found us who have received his spirit, praise God. If he hasn't found you yet, then evaluate your heart. 
analyze the inclinations of your heart, of your soul, of your will. Because everything God wants is for us to do His will. Adam and Eve disobeyed. They did their own will. They did the will of the devil. And consequently, they disobeyed God. Meaning, they stopped serving God to serve the devil. And then, humanity is lost because of that. However, God continues to look for people. He found David and he wants to find you. But it only depends on you. On what you have inside your heart. This has nothing to do with religion, my child. Look at me, friends. This has nothing to do with, oh, uh, it's a good person. No, it has to do with the inclination of the heart. The desires, your soul, the desires and the lusts, your projects, your personal dreams. How many people are watching me right now and the Holy Spirit is perhaps talking to them, for sure. And they say like this, oh, I didn't give my life to Jesus yet because I don't want to give it. I'm too young. I want to live life. Meaning, the inclination of the heart is to serve themselves. But there will be, oh, will they ever have time to return to God one day? Will they have time? We see there that all those youths that were there in that rave, in that festival there, and all of a sudden, people entered, the enemies of Israel invaded and went towards them and killed and raped them and, and took many of them captive. I mean, a, a living hell. And they were there enjoying life, apparently. God found David. The question is, have you been found? Have you been found by God? Hmm? Perhaps you are there thinking, oh, I'm so unlucky. No, it doesn't depend on luck. It depends on the intention of your heart, the inclination that you have inside of you. That's all. This happens to everyone, pastors, bishops, assistants, Levites. It happened in the times of the religious men. For example, there were religious Jews, but there was one man called Nicodemus who had a heart inclined, a heart that was sincere, and Jesus revealed himself to him. The woman from Samaria, she had, she had had five husbands and the one she had was not her husband. But Jesus revealed himself to her. Why? Jesus revealed himself, chose David. Have you been chosen yet? What do you need to do in order to be chosen? It all depends on what's inside of you. And this is very personal. This is very individual. And everyone has to make this self-analysis and see what is missing in them. But when God found David, even though he went through the valley of the shadow of death, David survived because he had a heart after God's own heart. Okay? May God bless you all. And I'll see you tomorrow in the name of Jesus. Praise God.